Hey guys, I hope you're all doing well. Um, so today we've got an interesting project we're working on. We're going to be automating um, contract drafting. So this is an example of a uh, lease contract, just a basic lease contra contract. You want to get the basics right, and then you can always manipulate it from there. So um, contract automation would work for doing standardized documents. So your non-disclosure agreements, um, retainer agreements, or... Uh, plaintiff's claims in small courts and things like that. So um, this is, for example, say someone who has 100 tenants in their uh, building and they want to send out uh, an application to a client to input their detail. We get their detail. It automatically creates um, a Word document. And then from there, we'll have, um, if there's 50 rent tenants, we'll have 50 contracts without us doing the work. And so we get the do we'll get the data from the tenants and then we automatically create the contract. So the data we're going to be manipulating is the areas in yellow here. So the tenant's name, date of births, location, ID, tenant cell, things like that. And then here today in one week is um, where we're going to, it's going to basically, uh, the contract will be binding one week from the date in which it is signed. So if we get down to the bottom here, it will have today's date where it will be signed. Um, ideally, the day it's drafted is the day it's signed, and then seven days from that, uh, that's the date it becomes binding. So as the tenant clicks save, it will save their contract with their name first, dash contract. So we've got the template done. Now let's look at the GUI. GUI is basic. Uh, it just means um, graphic user interface. So before we get to something like this, which is you'll have like collaps collapsible sections, so you'll have like um, section one, these details, uh, section two, certain details, and then create contract. Uh, before we get there, you need to create something basic. So you need to get the bare bones of the graphic user interface working. And this is usually in like Python or, or uh, PySimple GUI or um, Tinkint, 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 I don't know how you pronounce it, but you can use that as well. Um, there's no right or wrong way to do it. Um, I preferred Python. That's just my choice. So if we go down to um, the first version of it, where it's not collapsible, it's not anything fancy, it just works. So this is the simple, first simple GUI that I created. As you can see, it just has description and then where you put your data, create contract, exit, done. Once you get the bare bones working and you make sure every line, so you first start off with tenant, make sure that line is working. Date of birth, make sure that line is working so that when you're debugging, you'll know where to start. There's no point in writing out the code for an entire contract and then trying to debug after that. That's not how it works. So with this, um, with this application or this GUI, you want to make sure that the, the GUI doesn't work if certain information is missing. So if certain information like the amount or um, uh, say uh, location address and um, EIN numbers or social security number, whatever it is, you want to make sure that the GUI doesn't work if you don't have that information. But, you know, secondary information like um, email address, you know, that's, that's important. Um, something like, um, what can I say? Uh, employer or something like that where it's not really uh, it doesn't have a bearing on the vid validity of the contract that kind of information your GUI can work without so this is the second version of it um, where it has collapsible sections just because some of these sections are really bulky I was trying to find a way to get everything to sort of fit so I did that so let's say um, Dash his name is Dash he wants to um lease out a property, let's say it's, say it's a building of like um, 50 tenants in that building, it's an apartment building and you're the owner, uh, you have about 50 tenants and you don't want to be doing all of this. You can also still do this input data and then it creates the contracts for you or you can just send it out to the client, they input this detail for you. Um, ID, location, date of issue. December 1997, Cape Town, address 21 Church Street, owner's cell. And here's another really cool thing. Um, with this email address section, 
what you can can add to this GUI is um a f a way for it to um when we hit uh create contract that it also sends out a contract via email to the email address um inputted. That's why I said um no the email is important. The email is important because we want to add that once we click create contract, it also sends that contract out to um, said party. So we've collapsed section one and that data has already been inputted. Make sure um, you want to make sure your application works even if you close the section. So land, landlord's name, we'll call him Tommy. Tommy, let's say the standard amount for rental is 2000, right? And then it will determine what um what a levy fee or initial fee is so um i here's where we're going to put the clauses of the contract so i the tenant i the landlord will provide accommodation that's even how you spell it and then uh you the tenant the tenant promises to pay rentals monthly Right, so that's where you put like your clauses. And then if you click create contract, it will tell you that the file's been saved um, in a folder called backup dash, that's the name of us, the tenant, and then the contract. So you'll end up having a list of these tenants and they'll be in this folder, the same folder. It doesn't change the folder because this is the specific folder that you've designated to all of your, um, your tenants. So if you click on dash to see if this contract worked, Let's see. So it should fill out the areas in yellow, right? So as you can see, Miss Dash, born at certain certain date. Um, and then 1997, there's an error here, which is also pretty cool. I'll, I'll show you um, what you want to do later on. Uh, becomes binding on this date. So as you can see, it automatically calculates seven days from the date today that was created. So either landlord will provide accommodation, X, Y, and Z. So Dash agrees to provide Tommy, who's the landlord, with an amount of um, 400, uh, a non-refundable fee of 20% of this amount of 2,000 shall be paid. Um, so I think I put these, uh, put these, I mixed these around. It's supposed to be a total payment sum of 2,000, as in that's like the rental. And then it's supposed to do the 400 as the 20%, right? And then the date today dash Tommy, and then that's pretty much it. So that's pretty much it. Um, I hope this helps. And then the things we're gonna we're, what we're moving on to next is a really cool project. It's um, let me just show you if I can get it to open. This is basically a version of Word. So as you can see, um, I'm a bit of a cheapskate, so I didn't pay for Microsoft Word, and so I've created my own version of it, which is a clone. So basically what it can do is it can open files like the one you saw where there's an error um, and you need to change, um, let's say, template, right? And let's say there's an error in this template, whatever it is, and you want to change. So since I don't have Microsoft Word, this is how I'll do it, right? Rental amount to be paid, All right? So what you can do is you can... Um, and it will show you the location of things, which I think is really cool. So it shows you whichever document you're working on and the location. And if you click File, New, it's basically a new word. And it says, hey, guys, this is the project. Project. So File, Save. Well, obviously, it goes to Save As first. So Confessions of a Cheapskate. Two, so I tested this out. That was confessions of a cheapskate one, and now this is confessions of a cheapskate two. So that's it. So we've uh, we've done edit. We've done no, we haven't done edit. We've done new. We've um, we've done save. Um, what haven't we done? Yeah, we haven't done edit. So let's open a document and see if we can edit. So the ones that aren't Microsoft, like the ones that are from my GUI are the ones that don't have Microsoft, obviously, because I'm not Microsoft, but the ones that are, don't, that are sort of blank are mine. So my word document, for example, is mine. It says, hey there, this is live testing. File, save. Another cool thing it can do is, um, 
word count. And then that's our word count. So uh, thanks guys for joining me. I hope this shed some light on how to um, automate contract drafting. Uh, take care.